Now we're going to bring in a second structure and then we're about done. Uh, now th in this step, what we're doing is we have G alpha Q in two different complexes. We've looked at G alpha Q bound to GERP2, GRK2, and now we're going to look to G alpha Q bound to P63 rho GEF. And we're going to compare the G alpha Q. How different is the G alpha Q in these two different complexes? Is it undergoing a major conformational change, for example? So uh, we can also ask other questions, which we're not going to take the time to do today, which is, is P63 rho GAF binding the same interface on G alpha Q that GERP2 is? Or is it a different interface? So then we could look at the contacts of uh, G alpha Q to GERP2. We could see which residues are involved there. We could look at the contacts between G alpha Q and P63 rho GAF, and then we could compare those residues. And we could say, is that the same interface or a different interface? And you already have the tools to know how to do that. It would be similar to we looked at the contacts to our ligand, right? What we're going to do right now, though, is something different. We're going to ask, does G alpha Q undergo a conformational change uh, when it's bound to GERP2 compared to when it's bound to P63 rho GEF? So we're going to fetch to our GN. So if you come back here, I'm going to reset and zoom out. Uh, and then here, we're just going to fetch FETCH to RGN return. So you see a new structure pull up. Now this is in a completely new coordinate system. So it's not in any way aligned uh, to the structure we already have. It just comes up by itself. And actually this structure, I'm going to turn 2BCJ off. If we look at it, we actually, if we color by chain, we'll see um, there's two biological units here in this asymmetric unit. Uh, I, I don't want you to delete anything. I just want you to toggle 2BCJ off. See, I'm just toggling it on and off. Just click on the object name so it'll start gray. It'll disappear. Okay? And then fetch to RGN. Now we have two asymmetric, two biological units in our asymmetric unit. We're going to get rid of one of those biological units. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to type this command. Now I want to remove chain D, and I want to remove chain E, and I want to remove chain F. So why am I using OR here in this selection command? Why am I saying chain D or chain E or chain F? Okay. The reason is there is no atom that belongs to chain D at the same time it belongs to chain E at the same time it belongs to chain F. It only belongs to one chain at a time. So in order to, if uh, I say chain D and chain E and chain F, I'll get zero atoms because each atom is only in one chain, not three chains. So I need to put the OR in there. The OR says any atoms that are in chain D or any atoms that are in chain E or any atoms that are in chain F go into my selection. Okay? So that's what I want you to type in the window. It's chain D or chain E or chain F. And you should see all the atoms on one side uh, highlight. And we should see junk show up. So we can come here to action. Uh, whoops, I just deleted the selection. That's OK. I can up arrow. If you come here to action, you don't want to delete the selection because that just removes that bar 
um, from your uh, object list. You want to come down here to remove atoms. Now, if you actually remove the atoms, they're gone permanently. And so if you want to look at those atoms, then you have to uh, read the structure in again. Come on down and remove the atoms. Anyone having a problem with that? Okay. Uh, the arrow A, arrow remove atoms is once you've entered that, uh, you come here to the action A and come down to remove atoms. So you should see half of 2RGM disappear. Okay, now we're almost done here. Uh, now we have here a uh, um, heterotrimer. Let's go back. To IGN is G alpha Q and P63 rho gas. Um, now we're going to select the GQ, which in this case is chain A. But we can't just use chain A because we have a chain A in 2BCJ, which is GERT2, and we have a chain A in 2RGN. So we're going to use a slightly different syntax here for selecting because we need to say not only chain A, but we need to say which object it's in. Do I want chain A from 2BCJ or do I want chain A from 2RGN? If I just say chain A, it's going to take both chain A's. But I don't want both chain A's. Uh, so we're going to type again, but I'm using a slightly different syntax. In this syntax, you'll kind of recognize from the sequence window viewer. So if you ever want to figure out what this syntax is, you can look at the sequence, and it's over in the left-hand corner. So generally, the slash is a delimiter which separates pieces of information from each other. So it's slash object slash seg ID, which is almost always blank. So you um, follow with another slash and then chain, and then slash residue name or number, slash atom name or number. So it's slash object, slash blank, slash chain, slash residue, slash atom. Okay? So here we're taking slash object to our GN, slash, slash, chain A. That's our syntax. We're going to type this command here in the window. So uh, select. Now this is 2RGN underscore GQ. And this says slash 2RGN slash slash A. Everybody see that? And if I hit return, then I'm going to see the 2RGN GQ highlighted there. And I'm going to show this part of the molecule in cartoons. And I'm going to hide the line just for the um, GQ part. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color this a different color uh, that we haven't used yet. So I want to actually color that, uh, let's say, red. So my GQ is now a red. Uh, so we've selected two RGN underscore GQ. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this structure of GQ and we want to put it on top of the GQ from 2BCJ. Okay? Right now the GQs are, um, there's one GQ in red, and the, if I look at the two RGN, my GQs in yellow here, right? And they're not really, they don't have any uh, regular relationship to each other. 
So I'm going to take the GQ from G, uh, 2RGN and I'm going to superimpose it on the GQ from 2BCJ. So if you show both structures now, 2BCJ and 2RGN, you come down to your latest selection, 2RGN underscore GQ, come over to A for action. Come down to align, that's below modify, above remove atoms. We're going to superimpose it on selection. And the selection we're going to take is 2BCJ underscore GQ. Everyone see that? And then if you click on that, you're going to see things move. There. Did you see it move? Now I can't undo it. So, uh, And you'll see the red and yellow are on top of each other. So you can get a sense that actually they're pretty similar. And if we look up at the top window, we'll see that the RMS deviation is 0 0.582, which is really, really low for 292 C alpha atoms. So that's saying these atoms, the root means RMS deviation is a root mean squared deviation. So it's the difference between a C alpha atom and one molecule. So C alpha for residue one and C alpha, C alpha for residue one of 2BCJ compared to C alpha for the same residue of 2RGN. That deviation, uh, squared, and then you take the mean, and then the square root. Okay, so that's the root mean squared deviation. Uh, so 0.582 is pretty similar for those 292 atoms, meaning those two structures are very similar. And then if you want to see, some of the residues were rejected because they're pretty far out. You can scroll down, you'll see the alignment uh, window. Uh, you'll see that the residues that are colored were used in the superimposition are almost identical positions. The residues in gray were too far out. But you'll see that our ligand binding residues are very similar in the two structures, the orange residues. So that's how you can um, compare two structures. We're not going to do the third structure. You can save your work by saving a log file. Namely, you want to save a session file, uh, which saves the current state exactly where it is. Log file you can use for scripting for movies. I'm not going to talk about that. And save an image file. So generally, I uh, try to save a session file for every image file. And then you ray trace your view and then save your image file. And this is telling you how to save an image file. And this is telling you how to get a high resolution image. If you have questions about getting a high resolution image, like for a figure cover, or to know what size about your image, again, uh, the easiest thing will be to contact me and I'll help you through that part of it. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you.